Okay, so today I'm going to be working ePlan Platform 2022, and I'm going to show you how I work with the terminals. So I'm going to use the new insert center here, and you can see I've got some favorites already defined here, and to do this, it's pretty straightforward. You just go to the symbols, and you can hit this little star here, and it'll be added to your favorites uh, navigator here. You can also use the search up here, so if I want to look for a terminal, I can hit enter, and you can see that I've got 108 different symbols to pick from and a couple of devices and uh, macros, etc. You can see there's just a whole bunch. So I'm gonna grab one from my favorites and just drag it onto the page. So this is my first terminal. I'll place it down. It's gonna be called X1 Terminal 1. I'm gonna duplicate this four more times. And then the first three terminals are my L1, L2, L3, and then Terminal 4 will be my neutral. So I'll change this type of terminal from just a general to a neutral terminal, and then the ground to a PE. I'm then going to duplicate this terminal strip, move it up like so, and then renumber it. I can add uh, some wire numbers by highlighting everything, and then go into connections, and then place definition points. You can see them placed here as question marks. To add numbers, I just go to enter designation and hit OK. So these wire markers are definition points I can add information like wire gauge and color to. So if I select them all, go to properties, and then I can change the cross section. So these can be 2.5 millimeters, and then I can make all the wires uh, black. And then I can maybe change the neutral from black to blue. And then I can do the ground from black to green and yellow. So I'm gonna just add a little layer of um, complexity to this. So from one to two, I'm gonna add a saddle jumper just to show you how uh, flexible this terminal configuration can be and what ePlan is capable of. So if I go to insert and add, say this jumper here between the two terminals, ePlan is clever enough to know that this will be a saddle jumper or a comb buzz bar. So I can look at this by looking at the terminal strip and go into devices and terminal strip edit. So here I can see all the terminal strips. So all the gray ones are regular terminals. The saddle jumper is here and then the neutral terminal and then also the ground terminal. At this point in time, I have not assigned a single part number. I wanna do this automatically. So to do this, I can use Phoenix Contacts um, Project Complete and it's built into ePlan Platform 22. So if I open it, like so, and then go to tools and then planning. Then I want to use the automatic data exchange and then I want to use the PT terminal blocks like so. I just hit export and then select the entire project like so. So ePlan's going to open project complete and then figure out how many terminals I need, what the part number needs to be and any accessories that I need and then it's going to import those back into ePlan. So I'm going to hit finish. And now my terminal strip has all part numbers and I can see this by using the same menu before. So devices and edit terminal strip. So I can see now I've got my end plates, my end stops and all my part numbers as well. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And then I can jump it into my layout space on my 3D environment here. And if I just view it by the front of the enclosure, like so. And then I can use this 3D layout navigator to place my terminal strip. So I'm gonna place them all at once and I'm going to hit yes. And you can see right now it's going to place the first terminal strip. And you can see this is the saddle jumper that ePlan automatically recognized in between there. And I'll place my second terminal strip up at the top here. Notice this one does not have a, uh, a saddle jumper because it's not required. And then I can tell ePlan to wire these terminals together. And this is based off my schematic drawing. So I go to edit and then route. And you can see my wires are perfectly routed through the wire duct here. So if I turn it to the side slightly, 
You can see how they're wired like so. So I don't know, I don't have to manually select my part numbers. I can let Phoenix Contacts built-in tools uh, select the part numbers appropriate. So it based it actually on the conductor size. So this will be the 2.5 millimeter terminal from Phoenix Contact since that is the size of the conductor that I need. Okay, hopefully that helps. Thank you so much.